Hello and welcome to our video for problem 15 for my spring 2020 final exam. Here we're given the absolute value function, although only defined between negative pi and pi, and we're asked to find the Fourier series for it. Of course, this is going to assume that we reproduce this, this function right on other intervals so it becomes a, a periodic function. Uh, one quick observation, since we're going from negative pi to pi, right, the period of f is 2 pi. So this will be important when we try to find the Fourier series because uh, generally speaking, right, so the Fourier series, the Fourier series for F is given by, so let's write down the formula. So you're gonna write down, well, we'll write it with coefficients and then I'll tell you what the coefficients are in a moment. Uh, it'll look like A naught over two plus a sum from one to infinity then you're going to have, uh, whoops, not our function yet, that'll be coming next. You have our a sub n times the cosine of n pi x over L, where L is the half period, the half period of f. That is, you take the period for f and divide it by 2, um, plus b sub n times the sine of n pi x over L. Now in our situation, we know the period is 2 pi. So half the period, which is our L, is going to be a half of 2 pi, which is pi. So we're going to get to rewrite the inside of the cosine and the sine functions as well. If L is pi, then we just get n times x. All right, that simplifies things a bit. Um, of course, we haven't defined yet the, the a's and the b's. So where a sub n is equal to 1 over l, and of course our l is going to be pi, 1 over l times the integral from, well, in this case, we're going from negative pi to pi, so let's just write it that way. Uh, x goes from negative pi to pi, and then we have our function f of x, times the cosine, and again, in generality, it would be n pi x over L, but since we know the period is pi, we can just write n x dx. And so this is for all n at least zero. And then the b sub n is one over, again, L, which in this case is pi, and we integrate from negative pi to pi f of x times the sine of n x, only now the n is gonna start at one. All right, so in order to compute the Fourier series for this uh, periodic absolute value function, we're going to have to compute all of these, these coefficients. Now, to do so, it's probably going to be very helpful to quickly draw a graph of the function. So we know between negative pi and pi, we're going to get uh, one of the periods. Let me adjust this down just a little bit to line it up. And it's an absolute value function. So that's pretty easy to sketch. And we should really quickly make the observation now. So this is our this is our f of x graph. And of course it'll it'll start over, right, on the other side. Um, this function is the same on the right hand side and the left hand side for the same input. So if I put in uh, some x here. I'll get a height, and if I put in negative x, I'm getting the exact same height. So this is an even function. So f is even, right? It can't see when you put a negative into the input. Um, that's going to help us compute uh, our ans and our bns, uh, because, well, almost immediately, we can say, well, let's see, f of x, that's an even function, and cosine of nx, that's also an even function. And so the product is going to be an even function, which means instead of integrating from negative pi to pi, we, we can actually just integrate from zero to pi and then double. All right, so that should help us with our, our a sub n's. What about for our b sub n's? Well, again, we have an even function for f, but sine is an odd function. And so their product is an odd function. 
And whenever you integrate an odd function from negative pi to pi, you're going to get zero. So in fact, we're going to get zero without doing any real computations uh, for all of the, the coefficients for the sine. So this will actually just have a Fourier cosine series. Okay, so uh, why don't we uh, try to compute our ANs then? So let's see, a sub n, let's copy this, would be 1 over pi, only, ah, remember, we because we knew it was an even function, we could actually go from 0 to pi at the cost of doubling the output, right? Basically, there'll be two copies, right, one on each side. So I'll make this 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of, okay, well, between 0 and pi, I have the absolute value of x is just equal to x, all right? Uh, because there's no negatives to worry about. So this will become x times the cosine of nx dx. All right. Looks like we're going to have to do a little integration by parts. So let me give a name to this piece. I'll call this g prime of x. So g prime of x is equal to x times the cosine of nx, and I want to know what g of x is. So I'll do integration by parts. I'll split it up with x and cosine of nx. We'll use our tabular method. So differentiate the x to get 1 and then 0. Any differentiate cosine will give us sine. But we also have to divide by n because of the chain rule. So 1 over n sine of nx. And then another antiderivative. Well, antiderivative sine will be negative cosine. So we'll get 1 over n squared cosine of nx. We draw our lines plus and a minus, and so our antiderivative is going to be x over n times the sine of nx plus 1 over n squared times the cosine of nx. And now let's pause for a moment and notice we are dividing by n, and our a sub n's actually start at a sub 0. So dividing by n is not going to work here when n is equal to 0. So this is only going to be the situation where n is greater than 0. We're going to have to handle the n equals 0 situation separately. Okay, so let's see what we get. 2 over pi times g of pi minus g of 0. All right, so what is g of pi? Well sine of n times pi, sine of n times pi, hmm, sine of n times pi. We're looking at the unit circle here, and when you're at n times pi, well, pi, multiples of pi live on the x-axis, and the sine is telling you the vertical distance. The vertical height, right, the height here is zero at each of these points, so this is always zero, right, for all n. So the first part, when we compute g of pi, will be 0. OK, how about the second part? We get 1 over n squared, and then we get cosine of pi n. Well, the cosine is giving us the horizontal distance, which is either 1 or negative 1, depending on our, our choice of n. So we're going to get 1 over n squared times an alternator. When n is even, we get a positive 1, so like 0 pi, 2 pi, 4 pi. And when n is odd, we'll get a negative 1, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, etc. So we'll get negative 1 to the n over n squared. OK, so that completes our g of pi. How about g of 0? Well, at 0, the sine becomes 0. And then we will get cosine of 0, which is 1. We'll just get plus 1 over n squared. Uh, but then there's a minus here, so uh, minus 1 over n squared. All right, and so this is g of 0. OK, so I have a 1 over n squared in both pieces, so let's break this up. So I have 2 over pi, and I can factor out the n squared. So 2 over pi n squared. And what's left on the inside is an alternator minus 1. Now, this is going to have a very different value depending on whether n is odd or even. So let's see what we get. If n is, say, even, then I'll get minus 1 to an even number is 1. 
minus 1 is 0. Doesn't matter what I multiply by, it's still 0. Okay, what if n is odd? If n is odd, then I'll get negative 1 to an odd number, which is negative 1. Minus 1 is negative 2. Times 2, I'll get negative 4, and then I divide by pi n squared. Okay, so this shows us not only are we not going to get any of the sine terms, because our b sub n's are all 0, but for the cosines, we won't get any even terms either. All those coefficients are 0. With the possible exception of a sub 0, we haven't checked that yet, because again, we couldn't compute the antiderivative in this way. All right, well, better check our a sub 0 then. So a sub 0, that's that one special case, that'll be 1 over pi. Now actually, we can make it 2, that's fine. 2 over pi, x goes from 0 to pi. Uh, our function is still going to be x, but now we have cosine of n is 0, so cosine of 0 is just 1. Ah, so we're just integrating x. This should be pretty simple. Uh, so we have 2 over pi times antiderivative for x is x squared over 2, evaluated between 0 and pi. Uh, now the 2's cancel, that's great. So we really just have uh, x squared over pi. At pi, we're going to get pi squared over pi, which is pi, and at 0 we get 0. So in total our a naught is pi. All right, and so now we can put everything together. So this implies that our y is equal to, so we start with a naught over 2. Right, so we got to remember our original formula for the Fourier series. Right, we had an a naught over two. So a naught over two, our a naught is pi. So we get pi over two plus, and now we're going to have a sum, and we only want the odd n. So let's just write it like that: sum over n odd, and then our a sub n is going to be negative four over pi n squared cosine of nx. And that's our Fourier series. Now just for fun, let's take a look at the graph of this Fourier series for various n. So for example, when we start with n equals 1, we are just getting a cosine curve, which has been shifted up by a little bit, because uh, remember we, we had this a naught over 2, which was pi over 2, so that, that's what shifted this up. Um, but as I increase my n, well, switching to n equals 2 shouldn't make any bit of a difference because we were only summing over the odd ends anyway, right? All the even terms were 0. So let's go straight to n equals 3. And when we go to n equals 3, uh, you notice that this cosine curve starts to look a lot sharper at the top uh, and, and a lot flatter uh, in the middle. Uh, and it doesn't take too long. n equals 5 and man, this is already starting to look a lot like the absolute value function. There's a little wiggle, but very, very little. In fact, uh, n equals 7, n equals 9, and by the time we get up to n equals 19, man, other than a little bit of a rounded uh, cap here and at the bottom, man, it's really looking a lot like y equals x. So this Fourier series even when you don't have to go out too far, is already starting to look really, really good. All right. Well, hopefully that uh, not only uh, helps you to be able to compute Fourier series for functions, uh, but maybe gives you even a little more confidence uh, that they're going to be converging, in, in this case even uniformly it almost looks like, uh, to what it is that uh, we, we expect them to converge to, in this case the absolute value of x.